How yeah, many, uh, you, how are many are you people competing? do you? I am not competing, no. I, no. Uh, no, I've been practicing my ukulele. You, you might hear something. Oh, fun. That. Yeah. That's good, yeah, because that's the other side of this, right? We got an open mic. We got an open mic. Open mic, black camera, that could be a whole event in itself, but um, there's no rules against, you know, you can have an open mic and your camera off, and we could play, you know, masked micer. That's fun. But, but yeah, you don't, you don't have to keep your cameras on to join us today, but. So how many, on, how many people are in the Dutch oven cook-off? How many entries? Um, I think, well, Nora, you need a team name. Team Flavor Kitty. Yeah, I beat you to it. Nora, you're <laughs> muted. Gosh, sorry. I'm on my phone so that I can, um, like, you know, be over oh. by the stove. But um, I can't figure out how to change my name on the... Oh. I'll change it. You just tell me your name. Chris can do that for you. Cool. Well, um, let me think about a name then. <laughs> well, good. Or you better think quick or else Chris is going to find one for you. That is true. I'm trying to think of an embarrassing oh. one right now. Goodness, Gabby, you should be competing with that shawarma. Why not? Why aren't you competing? I think there's no rules. So when you're done with it, make sure you send us a picture or show us as you're making it because um, that definitely sounds delicious. All right, what was your AIM name? <laughs> I am never going to divulge that information, especially not on something that is streaming live on Facebook. You're about to. <laughs> Look at, mmm, so delicious. What are we looking at there? Banana bread. Banana bread. And is this going to be made mm. um, traditionally in a Dutch oven, or are you making this in the oven in the kitchen? I'm making it in the oven in the kitchen. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> we call that the non-Dutch oven category. Very nice. Gabby says she's not competing, but she's making shawarma in the oven. Who is? Gabby, it sounds like you're competing. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. If you are if you are joining us here today and you're and you're not competing, but you are you are eating, you can even text us what it is that you are having for dinner on this lovely, lovely Friday evening. Or you can text us what you would rather be having for dinner. That's fun too. Good Sometimes too. with my students, they don't have a good answer, so I tell them, "We'll come up with one that you oh, want." No. Instead. Singapore noodles, yes, yum. All right, Kath or uh, Elizabeth, you are now a host. Am I the hostess with the mostess? Oh, Singapore noodles. Here. I am. I too can rename people. Look at that. The power that holds. So much power. Yes. I use it. Oh, oh I, I promise. I promise to only use sparingly. How about something uh, bonsai related? Bonsai related. Here, hold You're on. already team excited toaster. Oh, yes. Oh. Is, is this bonsai? This is bonsai. Oh my goodness. Yes, we must have all things bonsai related. In fact, all pets, if you have pets, um, there's no competition for pets because all of them are tens out of tens, right? But um, you could definitely take a moment and, and turn on those cameras. Let's see those pets. We see Kirk's, Kirk's beauty right there. Oh, there we go. That turned on some cameras. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves showing pets. Yes. Oh, Margie. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes, Winter Mocha, look at these. Um, there should definitely be a chat right now. This is your moment. Let us know what those pets' names are so we can cheer them on too. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, we're in a cone. Oh no, what happened there? Too much Dutch ovening, I don't know. That's <laughs> Here's my pet. Oh, oh, very sweet. Uh, it's a beautiful star sweet. cactus. Yeah. Name is Madonna. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to those online. Welcome to those in, in the Zoom. Welcome to those in our hearts. Um, we are well on our way into the Dutch oven cook-off competition and um, campfire, sing-along, open mic, call it what you will. It's a Friday night. We're here to have some fun. So um, 
we have some competitors well on their way. Team Flavor Kitty is off to a start. He is cutting up something delicious on a cutting board. Could be, could be uh, onions, might be fingernails. We don't know. Let's see if we can spotlight that one and see what's going on here. We're going to pin that video. Um, there it is, nice and big. I hear spotlight for Flavor Kitty. Ah, yeah, that is your spotlight for Flavor awesome. Kitty. Show us what right. you got going on there. What Let's are we talk making? about what's going on here. I set it up nice and pretty on my table. Oh, yeah. So, um, sorry, I got to hold my computer while I do this. Oh, gosh, don't drop so, it. So, we've got some jackfruit. Oh, yes, I've, I've had this kind before. I can attest. It's good. Yeah. Jackfruit, uh, for those who don't know, is a really good, like, vegetarian, vegan substitute for, like, pulled meats. So, like, pulled porks or chickens and stuff. Uh, this has, like, really a lot of the same texture without really much flavor. And then I made a chipotle sauce here. Mm. Uh, made this earlier with some peppers, like some dried peppers. So, Any secret ingredients? Yeah. Um, I think the most secret I'm going to divulge them right now is some fennel and cinnamon. Mm. Um, that's really going to round out your spiciness on it, along with a little bit of brown sugar. Nice. Um, and then mac and cheese. That's the real secret ingredient, cheese and butter. Okay. I'm going to add extra butter to it. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to cook up the jackfruit with some onion and this sauce and then put it in with the cooked mac and cheese and bake it for a little bit. Maybe put a little cornmeal on top um, and some of these, I'm going to slice up these little peppers and put them on fresh for some crunch. That is sounding pretty, pretty dang good there. Now, when you say, uh, I see your Dutch oven, is this going in into a, um, an oven in the kitchen? Is this going outside? How are you putting this all together? That's a great question, Elizabeth. So this is going to be going inside a traditional oven. Traditional so, oven. I didn't uh, want to call it a convection oven. oven. It's different. And then my house actually feels a bit like an oven. So you might call it a three oven system. Um, oh. So house, oven, cooking me, normal oven. Dutch oven, and then my belly. So there you have it, Team Flavor Kitty with the tri-oven approach to this Dutch oven competition. That's pretty awesome there. Let us go ahead and see if we have another competitor. Oh gosh, we scared them all away, Team Flavor Kitty. They've all turned off their cameras except for Team Excited Toaster, Nora's AOL something. I have no idea, it's too long. Nora. Exactly. Outraged toaster, so. Oh, okay. Well, we <laughs> can we can change your name if you would like, but but let's go ahead and pin you now. No, Nora, you you said you would never divulge that. <laughs> well, you know, now that you put it out out there for the uh, world to see, I figured it might as well be truthful. It, it's outraged toaster. <laughs> that was my like seventh grade AOL instant messenger. Um, well, let's go ahead and fix that now. Um, yeah. Well, Outrage Toaster, tell us what it is, what are we making here? Well, we, we, we saw banana bread, is that true? Well, we won't be using a toaster today. Oh, okay. But, you know, once the banana bread is made, we will actually, you know, tomorrow morning perhaps use a toaster. So the name will, um, you know, be applicable in the future, I suppose. You know, um, I don't think I've ever actually retoasted banana bread in a toaster. Is this is this is this the truth? Toasted banana bread in a, oh man. Okay, so the pro move is retoast it in a toaster, and, and like uh, a toaster, a slot toaster. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I just get it right on in there, and then uh, just slather some butter on that bad boy, and oh, man. Like, so good. Tell you. Wow, what. I guess I was born today. I, I have no idea. I have not lived. Well, thank you for that that tip. How? Uh, what are you? What? Are, where are we at in your stages? Do you have um, a motive or a plan of action to take here with your banana bread? Yes. Okay. Let me find the. Oh, here we go. So. Oh. Nope. Yep. Okay. Whew, it's happening. So first of all, we've got a uh, <clears throat> the appropriate. Uh, decorations here get it all there we go yes yes see oh gosh <laughs> ain't that the truth maybe that should be the new team name hashtag wiggle butts drive me nuts amen uh all right so i've got my um 
Nice fancy uh, Dutch oven here. Is that a true Dutch oven? I don't think I've ever seen one as pretty. It is a true Dutch oven, but it's uh, it's like a an an oven Dutch oven. Um, it's cast iron with coated ceramic. Mm. They're like so great, but I would not put this one on the coals. Um, I also have a three oven system, like much like Chris. We've got the uh, the house oven, the Dutch oven, and the oven oven, which I believe is fully heat preheated now. Uh, so the last finishing touch here is walnuts. Ta-da! Wow. And then, just like that. Just like that. We put this bad boy in the oven. And uh, I will say the secret to, um, to my banana bread, I'm, I'm divulging my secrets now, uh, is uh, put in a third of a cup of yogurt and it gives it a really nice tangy flavor. Now, when you say yogurt, are we talking from the moo cow or are we talking from the, the almond? What are we talking here? Well, I put in just plain yogurt uh, from, from the old moo cow. All right, then. There you have it. So so I do have to ask a question. Being a um, Dutch oven novice myself, although my husband would say otherwise, <laughs> oh, um, what, why, why do you not have the lid on right now? Um, because it's in an oven and I don't have coals on top of it. Oh, okay. So, so if we were outside doing it, doing it outdoorsy, Style, then you would need that cover but since we're 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 doing the tri oven method we, yes we do not need the 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 cover at this time true wonderful did not mean to interrupt <laughs> that message from bonsai by the way um <laughs> yes that that is truly that is truly what we need too stinking cute, too stinking cute. Well, let's yeah. see here. I did believe we had one more, one more um, official entry into it. Team Winter Mucka, can you hear us? Can you tell us what is going on? We know you're outside. We're hopefully, we're hope, we hope that you are keeping well in the elements. Um, while they, while they hopefully get back to us, um, why don't we kick it off with a song? I'll play a song um, to get us started. If you are here. Uh, and interested in doing an open mic, our open mic is truly open. You can use it for anything you'd like um, to, to perform. We have lots of possibilities and arrangements here, but um, I'll start it off with a song. Um, why not the song that started it all? I'm standing up people because as a teacher, I've been sitting all day and I am done sitting. So I'm gonna stand up because that's just feeling good. By the way, my name is Liz Cadigan. Um, I'm a music teacher with the Washoe County School District, and I'm so excited to be here with all of you and um, Nevada Outdoor School and Friends in Nevada Wilderness and Friends of Black Rock. Um, it is just awesome to be doing this event with you here today. And so let us go ahead. Of course, I'm very good at pinning all of you. Now I have to pin myself. So let's see here. Ha, huh, hello. Um, why don't we take it back to a song about none other than our own Nevada State fossil, the ichthyosaur. I wrote the song in, um, in, in conjunction with a uh, dear colleague, Penny, uh, Peggy, who helped me write this song together. And so I'd like to bring it with you, um, the ichthyosaur song. Here we go. I'm an ichthyosaur. I am no more. I swear. Long time ago, when there were no people, because it was before. But I'm not a dinosaur. I am a dinosaur. I have lots of teeth, because I like to eat. I like to bite and I'd eat a million if I could. I'd like to eat more and more. But I'm not a dinosaur. I am a dinosaur. I have great big eyes the size of eyes, so I can see through the deep blue sea. I see so far 
Theosaur song. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Yay! 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 So fun. Yes. Um, thank you guys. Thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> um, it it is fun to sing these songs and and um a little bit about these songs. These were all written to kind of help teach our, our youth and our young at heart about the things that live and bump and creep and crawl and have happened all over the Black Rock High Rock area. So, uh, and Northern Nevada for that matter. So, um, well, we'll have a few others during the night, but if you, if you are feeling the urge to uh, perform, just go ahead and give us a chat. You can either, you know, openly do it and say me in front of everybody publicly in the chat, or you can even um, send it to me privately and we'll get you, we'll get you in the mix. Um, but now let's see, let's see where we are with our competition. Uh, oh, Team Winter Mucka, Team Winter Mucka, your camera is on. I'm going to come to you. Here we go. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. I was going to say, I think you were talking to me uh, before you started singing but my Wi-Fi was being, well, Wi-Fi. So I was like, I don't know if she's not. That's okay, we got you now. Uh, tell us, what, what are we doing here? Well, I'm here with Brandon. Oh, I'm trying again. Oh, we saw you. Oh, there hey. you are, hi, Brandon. Hey. I'm here with Brandon in my really terrible backyard, so I'm not gonna show it. But we are outside cooking on my little Dutch oven. Look at that. That is looking so far. Um, Team Winter America, you know, you are definitely in the lead for the most um, authentic Dutch oven <laughs> experience right now. But we don't know. Somebody might come in and, and, and join us. But uh, tell us, what is it that you are making in this authentic Dutch oven? So we are making this thing called Congo Bars. Um, they were pretty popular when Brandon was a kid. It's also pretty much like a chocolate chip cookie bar, but it's chocolate chips, peanut butter chips, and peanuts all mixed in like a cookie dough. And then it's a chocolate chip bar instead of a chocolate chip cookie. Well then, oh my gosh. So there you have it, people. We have one main entree competition going on here and two desserts. Two desserts. Oh, it is going to be interesting to see how this comes out. Although it all depends on how you sandwich it. Because, I mean, truly, you could have a dessert as an appetizer at this point. The main entree and a dessert as a dessert. So, I mean, we should see. But I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, what, what inspired you to do this Dutch oven recipe? <laughs> um, well, Brandon has a uh, story from when he was a teacher about there was a kid who would misbehave in class. And in order for the teachers to get him to cooperate, they would actually give him one of these Congo bars. Wow, it sounds like I need to, I need to uh, find out this, this kid's secret because I mean, if that's how he gets around with compromising in life, I feel like I, I found myself a new teacher. Um, yes. It's amazing, it's amazing who knows? what you do. Yes, who knew that you could, if you were naughty, you could get a chocolate chip cookie in life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've obviously been doing things wrong. So, well, there you have it. And and just out of curiosity, um, I'm assuming Team Winter Maka, you are in the muck. Is this correct? Yes. Yes. We well, let's, <laughs> uh, where, where are the locations of our other teams? We have Team Winter Maka in Winter Maka, Team Flavor Kitty. Where, where are you? Hey, Elizabeth. Hey. Uh, that's a great question, actually. So we're located in uh, kind of central flavor town. Oh, central um, flavor town. Yeah, which which lies in the state of Tastinati. Um, nice. Tastiopolis is kind of the greater metropolis that we are within. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we are in the country of uh, sweet and savory, the United States of sweet and savory um so that's great oh man you know i i've been there a few times and my passport is definitely full of scratch and sniff stamps it's great um yeah. great memories there so um that's wonderful well what about team actually Outrage? reno oh and reno <laughs> known as reno known as reno team outrage toaster uh where are you at right now you're muted you're still muted you're still muted you're muted you're still muted. You're so, so here we are. 
in in Team Mutesville. <laughs> I had a I had an incident earlier in the week where uh, the dog barked and I only said hey, but it could have been much worse. Oh. So you know I I am vigilant about muting now. <laughs> Fair enough. I understand. You know I I completely get it. Well, where are we located? Where are we making this banana bread? Well, I'm here in Reno. Banana bread is in the oven, but uh, I am actually going to take us on a trip here to um, Sushi Town. What? Oh, yeah. We're going to make some sushi. Is I've that got, also uh, going in the Dutch oven? It's not going in the Dutch oven, but oh, it's going good. directly into my stomach, um, which will be delightful. As sushi should. Oh yeah, absolutely. So all of our sushi joints are closed in Reno right now, but I stopped by Sierra Gold, uh, the fish place. I don't know, Sierra Gold, I think it's called. Uh, it's it's a consumer fish. fish, not goldfish, correct? It is <laughs> not goldfish. Okay. I don't, maybe they have some goldfish varieties, but um, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to the imagination. Uh, but so I picked up some stuff for sushi the other day because we had a craving. So um, I'll uh, I'll make a delicious sushi roll here and we can see how that goes. Well, there you have it. There you have it, people. We have two competitors in Reno who are very socially distanced, making sure that they are keeping um, each other quite quite far away from the competition to keep it safe. And one all the way out in Winnemucca. But wait a minute, what's that? What's that? We have Stacy coming in. She is making sourdough bread in the Dutch oven, but don't count me in. Well, what what would you make of that? Um, yeah, I would say she counts too. Um, why? Well, I'm curious. I let her count in. Yes, let's count her in. Um, Stacy, do you feel? <laughs> oh, look at that! Look at that! Um, well, Stacy, it doesn't have to necessarily be finished in time. I don't even think we have a time limit. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about your um, your sourdough? Oh, look at that! Here is Stacy. Stacy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell us what what is it that you're doing here? This is Brett. I have been working on Brett for like, this is their eighth edition that I've killed off unnaturally. Oh, uh, wow. But Brett, short for Brett Amesius, has, uh, has survived. And this is my very first sourdough loaf! <laughs> Congratulations to Brett. Oh my gosh, look at this apron you got going on here, girl. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and look at that sourdough bread. Yeah, I'm gonna go out and weld afterwards. No, it looks good. It looks good. <laughs> so this is your your first ever sourdough. Never made it before. Oh yeah. gosh. Oh, I'm yeah. so tempted. I, I'm I'm intrigued. I want to know how it's gonna come out. But but so what's the process here? Why why is it gonna take so long? Well, because it is its first rise. So this is called Adelise, and you um, this is the first time you let it rise. It's got to sit, Brett has just been incorporated with its first flour water salt combination. And then it's got to sit for 30 minutes for the yeast to incorporate. And then it gets pounded down again. Sorry, didn't mean for you to hear that. I mean, gently rolled and kneaded. And then it gets in the oven with a light on for three and a half hours before it uh, can be baked. So I'll call wow. you at 2.30 and see. Yeah, the you know, <laughs> um, uh, send it to voicemail. But, you know, I can't wait to wake up and see those pictures. So... <laughs> pictures I will if it doesn't work out or if I need a chainsaw to cut slices off I'm probably not going to send you pictures and and where is this gorgeous uh, sourdough being made where where are we at uh well um what I like to call the failed Somerset um not quite Somerset Reno but you know just below and working hard but uh um so we're we're in Reno I've got uh, my team is my uh my just recently neutered puppy who is the <laughs> A little low energy and could probably use a little slice of bread with maybe some liverwurst. But oh yeah, so that that explains for the cone. Yeah, second so, cone of shame because he got bit by a rattlesnake not too long ago too. So, so would you call yourself Team Ballas? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well then, guess what? Well, I just outdid you, Nora. 
toast out ask and you shall receive because that is now your team name um well there you have it people we have um brutals <laughs> we have team winter mucka team ballas team flavor kitty and team outrage toaster for four different teams right now in the um competition for uh this Dutch ovenness, which really it's just at this point, it could be anybody's game because really there is no game. It's just for fun. So um, it, it's exciting. It's exciting to see here. And we have lots of people hard at work. Um, I'm curious to know if we have any, um, any action on the, on the Facebook scene, but, but I'm not sure if my counterpart can, can tell me if there's any messages waiting there. Meanwhile, here in zoom, um, it's kind of a little radio silent in the chat room. Don't, don't be shy. Say, chat it up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we want to know you're there. We want to check a pulse. Um, I'd come digitally ding your doorbell right now for those of you who are, who are here enjoying the, the, the background noise, um, just to make sure you're okay. But, uh, yeah, keep that chat going so we know that you're there. Um, while we are looking at our teams watching them i will go ahead and play you another song because i mean it's that's what this is for we'll play some songs um also if you are familiar with the uh northern nevada desert song repertoire for lack of a better word and you have a certain song that you're looking for would like to hear uh, by all means you can write that request in the chat um because those are the songs I have out for you today, people. So, <laughs> so if you have a favorite, definitely let me know. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can find all of the Northern Nevada Desert songs that were written online. If you search for it on YouTube, um, all of the songs have been put on, on that website and can be downloaded there. Um, and it's just a fun way to, to listen to some different music and, and learn a little bit more about our Northern Nevada Desert. And so speaking of which, the next song that I have for you, um, is one that talks a little bit about responsible recreation. Yay! Because after all, if we don't take care of it, we don't get to really enjoy it. So uh, it's real important to, to take care of our lands, but I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, uh, insert music pun there. So uh, the song that I have for you now is Truck Your Trash Out of Trago. If you are interested and you are looking to do um, some open mic of your own, just let me know in the chat so that way I can um, get off the soapbox, so to speak, and let you go. But uh, this next song, yes, it is Truck Your Trash Out of Trago, so enjoy. Where's my ukulele? There's my ukulele. Where's the pin? Here's the pin. Here's the next song. There we are. Yes. Yes. Oh, hold on here. We have a friend. We have a friend we have to meet. This is my friend Gus Gus. He's our, he's our puppy. He was neutered uh, August of last year, Team Ballas, so he knows how you feel there. Um, but, but yeah, fortunately we are past the cone of shame and into just living life ball free, carefree, and just full of love and pat. So yay, Gus Gus. One of the positive things about being online right now is that if we were out in the desert, this poor boy would not be able to join us because he truly is mama's boy in the sense of no other dog can even look in my direction without him going berserk. So um, he's not exactly the most friendliest dog with other dogs, but with people, he is just a gym. So there you have it. There is always a silver lining to all situations. All righty, here we go. 20 miles east of Gerlach, there's a scene you can explore. A hot springs they call Traco is the place you're looking for. While you gather up all your things to camp a night or two, there's a few things that I need to ask of you. Truck your trash out of Traco, leave the sand dunes where they stand. The conflicts are arising while they get in and out of hand. Know the rules and the guidelines when you use our public lands. Teach others so that they will understand. The water out near Trago is real fine. For soaking but wakeboarding is where they draw the line. If you're headed out to take a little dip, don't leave the things you brought out on your trip. 
truck jumped, trash shot a train, or leave the sand dunes where they stand. The conflicts are arising while we get in out of hand. Know the rules and the guidelines when you use our public land. Teach others so that they will understand. Dirt bikes and ATVs are fun to ride. Just be sure to keep them on the path and abide by all the signs. And if shooting firearms is your desire, make sure your surroundings are safe before you fire. Trek yard, trash out a tray, go leave the sand dunes where they stand. The conflicts are arising while they get it out of hand. No the rules and the guidelines when you use our public land. There comes a time on many Trago trips in which people have to excuse themselves and find a place to sit. Please note there are no restrooms for your use, so be prepared to pack your human refuse. Track your trash on a Trago, leave the sand dunes where they stand. Conflicts are arising while we get in out of hand. Know the rules and the guidelines when you use our public land. Teach others so that they will understand. Playing out near Trago, please be aware of other visiting travelers and the wildlife that live there. While your sense of recreation may seem real fun, Think twice on how it impacts everyone. Truck your trash out of drink, leave the sand dunes where they stand. The conflicts are arising while we get in out of hand. Know the rules and the guidelines when you use our public lands. Teach every so that they understand. Everyone, let's go! Truck your trash out of drink. Know the rules and the guidelines when you use our public land. Teach others so that they will understand. Teach others so that they will understand. Teach others so that they will understand. Nothing like some responsible recreation, huh? That was awesome. Thank you. Yay! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, look at that. Asking you shall receive. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. You got a joke to tell? You could do it. Doesn't have to be, you know, five minute craziness. But speaking of asking, Team Flavor Kitty, Team Flavor Kitty has a song at the next best time. Well, I'll tell you what the next best time is. Right now, right now is the next best time. Yeah, so let's see. Okay. Oh my goodness, Team right, Flavor Kitty. We gotta get our- We gotta go to the stuff. studio. Oh no, oh, we're, we're going on a field trip, everyone. Yeah, we're going and welcome to the Flavor Kitty Studios. Walking through people's houses is how I spend half of my Zoom meetings, so this is fun. Oh. Can I sing it? Yeah. All right, so wait, let me just like, tell me how this audio sounds. Oh gosh, well, I, I heard guitar for like two seconds. I'm assuming that's probably happening with the ukulele then too. <laughs> All right, does that sound, no, you, your sound has been pretty good. Okay. Can you hear it then? Does that sound let, good? Let me see, I'm going to, I'm going to, can you see me? Can you see yeah. my thumb? Okay, yeah. I'm going to mute myself. Cool. All right, so um, we're going to do a cover of one of our favorite folk singers. Um, his name is John Craigie. Um, for anyone who's looking for some good new music, John Craigie. Um, and this is a song that he wrote, and it's called Let's Talk This Over When We're Sober and Not a Burning Man. Uh, seemed appropriate. All right, that was a good one. 
Well, I know you want to have a real serious chat right here, right now, inside of our tent. Oh, baby, don't you know that I understand? But this really ain't the best time and place. Let's use one of the other 358 days. Let's talk this over when we're sober. And we're not a burning man. So you can sing along at home, just leave your mute on. But that's the chorus. Let's talk this over when we're sober and not a burning man. Well, I know you want to complain about your roommate again because she never ever does any of her dishes. And how all she really needs is just a good, good man. But I just want to talk about planets and stuff And how, 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 how much Deep House sucks Let's talk sober when we're sober And we're not a burning man All right, do you want to go through that? Yeah. We're going to peel back the curtain a minute. Our timer is going off. All right, I'll, I'll keep it going without you. Yeah, I know that you think that I smoke too much pot. I know you think my lazy friends should all get jobs. Trust me, I know when I told you your grandpa kind of looks like a pug, you got real mad. But you have got to admit, maybe he kind of sort of does. But never mind, baby, that's not the point. Because we'll talk this over when we're sober. And we're not a burning man. All right, you take the next one. Now you do it. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about the bills we have. Don't want to talk about your issues with your mom and dad. Don't want to talk about under no circumstances should I ever, ever wear jean shorts. Oh, maybe it's okay if I cut them off at the ends. You know, I don't really want to have this conversation. Come on, baby. Let's go climb on some crazy art. And there is so much that we can't process, girl, when we get back to that old default world. But for now, honey, let's enjoy this party while we can. We could talk about some serious stuff, but I hear there's a wooden man that they're about to blow up. Let's talk this over when we're sober and we're not a burning man. Oh yeah, we could redefine our relationship, or we could make love on top of a pirate ship. Let's talk this over when we're sober. And we're not a burning man. Let's talk this over when we're sober. And we're not in quarantine. All right, that's our song. That's all we got. Well, there you have it. That's all you have. That's quite a bit. That, that was awesome. Great. That was great. It. Now, Team Kitty, we can't give you any extra points for the song, but in a different category, we can give you best of show. So that was awesome. Great job Thanks. with your with Not at Burning Man song. Yay, and the, the chat here, we have Gallivant, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, people are enjoying what we have going on here. Black Rock Desert inspired culinary and song arts. So cool. It truly is, Tara. It really is. It's We're having just a great time here. So if you are feeling inspired, definitely write in the chat. Let us know um, if you're interested and when you are interested. So that way we know when to, to give you that spotlight, that desired spotlight in the digital world here. Uh, because it is going to be, it is going to be great. And speaking of great, let us look, let us let's see what's going on here. Um, let's go ahead and jump back to Team Winter Mucka. Team Winter Mucka, can you hear us? Let's see here. Yes. Yeah, there you are. Hey, Team Winter Mucka. I have to, I have to say, Alana, not only is she a divine cook of, um, 
child persuading chocolate bar inspired dishes. Um, <laughs> but she's also a wonderful host of digital virtual Black Rock Rendezvous, Black Rock Rendezvous events. Black Rock Rendezvous. <laughs> Black Rock Rendezvous events in itself. Yes, that's right. On Tuesday, um, we, we were so able to, we were able, we had a chance to collaborate and do a, um, a hosted event the children's play time and he was so good he was so good we we talked about fairy strip and uh uh desert days and mammoths and and i just have to say it was it was quite awesome yes were you able to to um salvage your your little crafts that you made at all yes we have them and i took them back to the office today to hang them up as they should be proudly displayed <laughs> i i personally have my fairy shrimp still here uh, just to show people, this is one of the crafts that, that Alana's uh, group with Nevada Outdoor School put together for, for people to make, not just children, but anybody who's interested. Who's interested. Uh, this is a fairy shrimp coloring page that um, we turned into kind of like a little puppet here that you can use, and it's, it's quite fun. It's so fun. cute, I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's totally fine. I can't take credit for the coloring. That is totally uh, my husband's doing. He He's the, the actual visual art maker, but but definitely Great job with that. And we also have um, on that, on Nevada Outdoor School page, um, this gorgeous Desert Days coloring page that you can do. Once again, colored by the one and only Christian Campbell. Actually, there's a bazillion Christian Campbells, but there's only one in my life. So um, <laughs> there's that. We have this gorgeous one. And then, and then I think <laughs> the best, the best. Um, the Wooly Mammoth Ring. I have to say that carefully. I was one of those children in speech for W's and R's as a child. Um, but the Wooly Mammoth Ring, which actually ours is not a Wooly Mammoth. It's a Colombian Mammoth, which means yes. it's, it's a little bald. Um, but mine has been made Corona, uh, corona style, COVID style, because um, I didn't realize before starting the craft that I didn't have half the things at home. So um, mine, it doesn't look exactly like it does in the video, but, but here is my woolly mammoth ring that you too can make at home um, with tape and other things you find around the house or using the actual things. <laughs> Tell us about yours, Alana. Yeah, um, ours we made at the office and uh, we actually made a larger one so that it would fit around the arm. I still don't have it on me. I talked about drawing eyes on my arm but you can put it around like your upper arm and then you use your whole arm as your trunk. And that it's just something is so much fun. fun and silly. Alana, look what <laughs> I just realized. If I put my fingers down, oh. isn't that too stinking cute? Yes. Yeah, wow. I know. Why did <laughs> this is just too much Love fun. Okay, yeah, we're having too much mammoth fun. Mammoth part two video. I know, right? You could just totally have two mammoths and just why, why, why do you need to go see your friends when you can have mammoth rings? No, you can <laughs> totally need to go see friends. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so these crafts are there for you. And what's great is um, you could totally wear a ring and play ukulele. It doesn't get in the way, I've learned. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, so thank you to Nevada Outdoor School and you, Alana, as well, for putting that all together. That was really fun to do earlier in the week. Yeah, it was fun doing it with you. Yeah, and if you missed it and you want to go back and see all the fun, um, I believe that that video is on their Facebook page. You can also find it on YouTube. Is that correct? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's all over the place. Any place you can put it, it's there. So find it. Find it. But but that's not what today is about. Today is about Dutch oven. Is it? How are the, How is your cook cooking going? Like, what what is your timeline here? How long will you be sitting outside before you get to eat cookie bars? Um. We're pretty sure it's done. We lifted it up uh, about 10 minutes ago and it looked pretty done. We put the coals on uh, just to see if it could get a little bit browner, but it only takes 35 minutes to bake them, so. Oh, wow, that's fast. All right then. Well, um, I, I, I would love to get a shot of, of you maybe doing the unboxing of these or, or even tasting them at some point. If, if you're not ready now, um, Oh my gosh. Oh, why? Well, while you're I'm, ready, who, who are we looking at besides Brandon? Uh, Brandon and my dog, Abby. Abby. Oh gosh, Abby. Love bug. Look at the camera. <laughs> well, we're all definitely looking at her. She's cute. <laughs> Look at this. Here come, here come the briskets. They're coming off hot and ready. 
oh no, it knew we were excited and it froze. Well, I will go ahead and keep watching uh, Team Winnemucca. We'll see if we can get them back on when they are ready. Um, while we do that, let's go ahead and check out Tara. It's good to see you. Would, would you like to say anything? Or you're just turning your camera on so we can see your beautiful face too. <laughs> She's like, don't put me on the spot, lady. This is crazy. No. Oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here uh, for the recipes and the good music. Absolutely. Well, yes. And if you yeah. have a recipe to share, I know um, there, there are ways to share links in the Zoom as well. And I'm with you, girl. It's, it's been fun seeing all these uh, recipes and I'm, I'm tempted to just, you know, yeah, see what kind of people can myself. cook up. Um, although it, it does remind me that I have to reheat some lasagna that I have left over. Oh, <laughs> that's, well, my, I mean, that's you, my big dinner plans. If you put it in a little pot, you can jump in too and the, <laughs> the Dutch oven go. Totally, in. just throw it into that mini. Yeah, you know, just last say, minute entry. This, this is what I whipped it's up in 10 you. minutes. Dark pot, last minute entry. Yeah, this is totally, you know, Our a 17 layer lasagna. Yeah. I've heard it's been done. Um, oh, look at this, people, look at this. We have a new entry for the open mic. So let's see if we got that. And then we'll come back to our, uh, um, our teams here. Miss Margie Reynolds, tell us, how have you been spending your Corona COVID time? Well, I've been learning to play the ukulele. I've been so inspired by you. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna play a little song and I've got it. Um, it's, um, it's right here. Do you want to tell us the name of the song or shall we play Guess the Game? No, I think you guys can guess the name. Okay. Then, um, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, when you're ready, honey, we got you. We got you. Okay, great. I'm going to start sort of a little farther along because it gets there's a good part coming up and I want you guys to be able to hear it without taking too much of your time. Oh, oh, so, of course. Anyway, uh, here, I'm, I'm going to go right now. So, okay. so fantastic that's I don't know how you did that it's amazing i mean yeah it's just a little chapstick you know it's just just a little yes. well thank you margie i mean look at that you get inspired and i mean yeah. who knows what we're going to be hearing next right oh my gosh well geez that was wonderful gosh i wonder wow so impressed thank so you. impressed <laughs> Well, let's see here. I'm looking. I see Team Ballas looking flawless in the screen. Oh, wait a minute, girl. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this that we see? 
my husband. What is going on with your, um, what are you planning to, to drink with this, uh, with this sourdough that's going to take forever? Oh my God, this is a lovely margarita, but I got to show you Singapore noodles. Come with me over here, we're over here. Okay. Oh, yes. All right, can we see this? All right, there we go. There's a sauce in the making. And uh, I'm making an omelet here, which I'm going to slice into strips and to throw into the sauce. Wow. Um, so Let, let's look at what pretty time good. is dinner <laughs> and how big is your table? <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> um, if anybody, I just started another batch of sourdough starter and I finally think I nailed it. So if anybody needs a sample starter, I'm willing to, to, uh, to get it to them. Do you call the second one, I'll be Bert? <laughs> I like that, that's good. I could call it Ernie. <laughs> you could call it Ernie. <laughs> it helps to name them, I've heard, actually, because you're they're alive. You got to treat them well, feed them, give them the right temperature, take care of them a little bit. Reminds me of my Tamagotchi from when I was, you know, a little younger, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like that, right? Carried around on a keychain. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see everybody else's food. All right, well, let's see here. Team Flavor Kitty, we see you hot in your screen. Let's see here. Um, by the way, we don't know. We, don't, we only know half of Team Flavor Kitty. We have Chris and... Oh, yeah, we should do some interactions. This is... Hi, I'm Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I just got back from a run. That's why I look crazy. Oh, I thought that's how you look sure, studying all the time. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, probably look that running glow. Uh -huh. Lisa, Lisa and I are engaged to be married. Yeah. Sometime. Congratulations, you know Chris and Lisa. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Or Lisa and Chris, or how, however. Um, however. However, yeah. Krista. Krista, we go by. Oh, you should. Uh, yeah. Krista, Krista, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you called on us, because I actually have a pretty exciting update here. Um, what? My, my spies over in the Team Outrage Toaster Camp have come back with Nora's secret ingredient. What? Um, pretty crazy. I actually had some of this on hand. I've heard word that she uses this um, pretty much unsparingly to make some amazing dishes. Um, let's bring it on screen nice and slowly. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, it's organic salted butter. Um, Listen, if you're not using butter, you're not doing it right. According to the Dutch oven gurus, uh, plenty of butter and cheese is the secret. That is that is the secret to all all good dishes, right? I mean, you could just put butter and cheese in a Dutch oven, put that on the coals, and you, you're you're set to go. It would probably win. It, I think it would. You know, I think that might be a good contender for for next year's event, whether it's digital or you know in person. Gosh, you know, when I was a kid, my favorite uh, uh, latchkey snack was warmed butter between my hands, rolled in sugar. <sighs> <laughs> um, I, I, instead of having my hands, would do that with bread, but I think you've taken it to a whole nother level with just, uh, and how would, yeah, I, mm, that, that, sounds, that sounds like a latchkey kid snack right there. Let's just leave it at that. Um, well, since since Team Flavor Kitty has released that that information, let's go ahead and jump over to Outraged Toaster. Um, oops, no, I don't want to make you the host, Outraged Toaster. I want to pin your video. There we go. Hello. Well, I, have to say, I have to say that I took my own advice to heart in my uh, banana bread and put in twice the amount of butter that it called for. So <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure that that's the only reason that it's going to be delicious. Let's see, so, oh, let me turn my video around here. Oh, we've got our, yep. Wiggle the butt portal. still drive me nuts. The portal. Okay, let's see. Bring this bad boy out here. Put the lid on, because I wanted to cook faster, but it didn't really work. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Oh. Wanted to get real brown around the edges. We're not quite there yet, though. It's looking nutty. Yep, looking real nutty. I think the nuts on top of banana bread is like, that's where it's at. Now, are there nuts in the bread too, or just on top? Just on top. Just on Here's top. Our, so, 
Our little oh, last piece look at this. Here. We got going on. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Is there actual fish in there, or is it just vegetables? What do we got? We got we got some shrimp in there. Had oh, some I see it. Shrimp, some jalapeno. Is and it jalapeno you business? You put, you put shrimp and jalapeno on your banana bread? <laughs> and I just put su full, full on sushi in my banana bread. There's a little wow. surprise hiding in there. Bold. She toasts that too. Oh. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna know the the true secret, just uh, stick one of these bad boys right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Oh wow! As you ate that, it was almost like like taste D because your phone vibrated and it was like you were like biting the phone. It was just grr, grr. it was pretty impressive there. I planned it that way. That was good. That was real good. Well, yeah. Well, oh my gosh, all these teams and all of your delicious dishes, even if you're not competing with um, the, the Dutch oven championship here, let us know in the chat what it is that you are eating tonight or wish you were eating. Um, I know currently I'm doing a fitness challenge and can't really have too many fun things, but come this weekend, man, I tell you what, um, Bangkok Cuisine in town has opened back up and they have... Uh, announced that they have what's called boozy boba. Oh yes, that's right. If you are a bo yeah, I saw some faces there. Yes. Um, if you are a boba drinker, I, I do enjoy me a boba from time to time. They have a boozy Thai iced tea boba with Bailey's cream, which um, sounds delightful. And they also have a boozy Singapore slinger boba. And um, both of these drinks you can get to go. So you, uh, I guess that's something that I just recently learned has been adjusted on the um, COVID restrictions that restaurants that are doing things to go, they can um, provide you with drinks to go as well, including the alcoholic ones. Just whatever you end up getting, whether it be alcoholic or not, just drive safely and bring it home and enjoy it there. Um, I'm looking at Team Flavor Kitty here. I wanna see, um, what do we got going on? Let's see, pinning video, uh, hello. My dish is ready for whenever the uh, dishes go on the on the table. Oh gosh, well we have, I know I know team uh, Winnemucca also said that their dish was ready. We saw briskets coming off. So I think um, really at this point, team outraged toaster, you might just be a little outraged if, you're, if your uh, <laughs> banana bread's not ready, but that sushi certainly is. And team ballless, we know that that sourdough will be ready in January. So, I mean, it's, it's all right. That's good to know. Well, well, tell us, Team Flavor Kitty, what do you got going on? All right, let's see here. So, um, this dish is inspired by the Nevada sunsets. Um, I'm gonna call it the Nevada sunset mac and cheese. Let's get a little aerial view. So, the, uh, the yellows and the browns of the mac and cheese and the chipotle sauce jackfruit kind of makes the the brown hills and then we've got the uh a slight layer of cornmeal so which which represents the uh sagebrush dotting the hills and then we've got the assortment of bell peppers which are of course the sunset colors and then the light sprinkling of blue cheese which is the uh the clouds that are ever present <laughs> My goodness, you know, Margie, I was just thinking the same thing. We definitely have a future artist in residence here. Home means dinner tonight. I tell you what, that is looking gorgeous. Um, wow, just congratulations on that dish. We, we, we will all have to just trust you on the taste. Let's see you, let's see you enjoy that first bite here. Don't burn your face. I need to turn on the sound so you can hear the chewing. Oh yes. Love, people love listening to chewing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mm. I love it the most. You know, I gotta say, it's pretty good. Does it taste as beautiful as Nevada sunsets are? Um, no flavor could be as, as tasty as a wild sunset. Said by a true Nevada lover. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think I, a little burn I, think I burned the, the peppers and the uh, garlic and when the sauce, when I was making the sauce. Um, so we in all honesty, honesty, it could be a little less burnt flavory but it's pretty good. 
Oh, a point knocked off from Margie for the burnt flavor. But, you know, we appreciate your honesty because otherwise we would have never known. Speaking of which, um, it is up to you, faithful, fearless audience. Um, let, let Chris know, let Team Flavor Kitty know, what, what awards do you present them with that gorgeous Nevada Sunset Mackin um, Chipotle Jackfruit Surprise? Um, very nicely done. Go ahead and give them whatever award you feel like is, is worthy of such a beautiful dish. And let's go ahead and bump into Team Winner Maka. Team Winner Maka, we are calling you. Um, how are those cookie bars coming? Hello again. Hello again. Yeah, my phone got too hot and decided to just, you know, shut down mid sentence. Oh, no. Yep. So, but I got my laptop now. And we can do the big reveal, maybe. The unboxing, yes. Is it face in the Dutch oven? Is the face? Will we see? Will we see the? We see. Oh my goodness! We see beauty. <laughs> oh my goodness! Is is that like scorching hot? Can you can you taste some right now? Um. Yeah. It smells, fantastic. I was saying, it smells pretty good. It, we can smell it from here. Oh, I bet. Let's see. I have a spoon. Addy would love to taste it. Mm -hmm. Please, Abigail. <laughs> Brandon, do you want some? Sure. Oh, careful there. Oh, God. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should blow on that for a bit before you, you hurt yourself. No, it's fine. Hot. Yeah. Tad hot, but good flavor. The chips are all nice and melted. Zoom in on that. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Abby's definitely going to get some now. I just dropped some. Oh, no, cho well, no chocolate. It's okay. No chocolate. That's good. Well, you just got 10 points for melted chips. Um, oh. People are asking if you have any milk. We got cookie emojis here. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks it looks good. It looks amazing. Uh, definitely wish we were there. Yeah, and I actually do have some milk. It's just in my fridge. But yes, milk is definitely available. Alana, do you mind telling me what's in it again? I guess. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Only if you send me your mac and cheese recipe later. <laughs> um yeah it is like all the ingredients or just like the main things go for it, the girl. ones you're willing to divulge um Paint me a well i found the recipe I know, but it's chocolate chips peanut butter chips peanuts and then brown sugar flour eggs oil um it's kind of cool because instead of using like uh white sugar, cane sugar, it only uses brown sugar. So um, I feel like it makes it a little extra sweet with that brown sugar instead. And yeah, vanilla, baking powder, eggs. Did I say eggs already? I don't remember. But typical like cookie dough ingredients. Sounds great. Well, there you have it. That's, That's looking well. amazing. Once again, um, be sure to give Team Winter Mucka the awards that you feel like they deserve with this gorgeous cookie bar um, Dutch oven recipe. It definitely looks quite, quite, quite tasty. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and jump over to Team Outrage Toaster. Hello, Team Outrage Toaster. Um, we, we don't want you to get sick from trying your, your banana bread too soon. But perhaps you can you can describe it to us. Okay, bring this bad boy out of the oven. Oh, Team Flavor Kitty just awarded Team Winter Mucka best rural based entry. I feel like Team Flavor Kitty should get best rural flavored entry. Different words there, but similar, similar words. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's looking bready. We're looking, we're looking pretty good here. Let's, uh, let's see what we got. 
Oh, it's, it's coming out clean. <gasps> okay. Let's dig in. It's going to be real flip hot. It, flip it. Flip it. <laughs> flip it. Oh, my goodness. Is this a thing? Only for a pineapple upside down cake. Oh, that's true. It is a thing. Team Ballas is saying your um, banana bread is looking amazing there, Team Outrage Toaster. Nice. Um, you've also been called a yummy Nora. Yummy Nora. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the last time. I'll be the last. Damn it! I really wanted the yummy award, Nora Award. <laughs> looking, looking real good. Oh, oh, okay. oh, thank you, Gabby. Uh, Gabby has fixed her pun or her punctuation, and now it's yummy, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> but I like yummy Nora Award better. All right, all right. Let's see what we got going on here. Look at that piece of bread. Don't burn yourself here. Oh, oh. careful! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> careful careful the prestigious yummy nora award yes um she might also get the 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 few less taste bud awards too after eating this scorching piece how about the burn the inside of your mouth award oh yeah that is so good oh well, yeah, yeah so filthy that reminds me of a joke. um why did the hipster burn their mouth because they were eating banana bread straight out of the oven because they ate the pizza before it cooled down, right? They were eating it before it was cool. Get it? Um, mm -hmm. I know, yeah. I think I might have messed up the joke, but there you go, yeah. Hipster burned his mouth. He was eating pizza before it was cool. There you go, yeah. Same thing with Nora here. Totally nailed it. Nora's kind of a hipster. I am not a hipster. <laughs> That's how you know she's a hipster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like burning mouth. Oh, I feel like burning of mouth problem too. Yeah. Oh, oh God, man. she can't even speak. She has to type it. I was waiting for a Dutch oven joke. You know, I wish I had one. Well, I, I sort of had a bad one about the other type of Dutch oven, but uh, <laughs> that's about it. Oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've got a very wild dog. Oh. Oh, well, what does Bonsai say about it? Bonsai oh, that's says, too hot. That's what she's always got to say. Hey. Oh. All right. Bonsai goo. Too cute. So we're moving into the closing ceremonies portion of the night. We are. We um, sure are. So, so much hasn't changed. Group that would like to, we haven't really touched base again with Ballas, Team Ballas. Would you like to have any final words before we uh, wrap up our official, unofficial ceremony here? I wanted to show you the progress because it has risen. Uh, that little piece of tape was to show where it started. So we got live action on our- Show uh, us again, show us again. Now you're nice and big. <laughs> okay. So live action on the, whoops. There we go. Can we see it? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's working. Okay. Now you guys see Singapore noodles. And then Singapore noodles. Sans mm. noodles. Because I haven't finished the noodles yet. My goodness. <laughs> Delicious, delicious. Thank you so much for sharing those videos. Well, or those videos, those views, those views of this gorgeous food. Well, you know, if I had to call it, I would say, can did, I, we take out, did we take out Stacy? Um, can I request one more song? Yes, you. of course you can request another song. Um, shoot, I don't know which one though. The Ichthyosaur is usually my favorite. I did say Mammoth. that one. Yeah, you already did that one, though. Mammoths. Um, what's that? Which one? Mammoths, the new one. Oh, the new one. I you know, know there was a new one. Fine. Oh, you haven't heard it, Chris? That's what I want to hear. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then, well, then, yes, I will sing the new song. The Black Rock Timeline song is what it's being called, for lack of a better name. I think it's a good name for it. Um, but, yeah, we'll use that to, to wrap up our beautiful four-way tie Five, if we're including Stacy, maybe no, Stacy. What do we got going on here? No, we got it. We got a four-way tie. Um, so congratulations, congratulations to all of our gorgeous uh, crockpot winners. You win the the top prize of nothing, but prestige and awards. So there you have it. And um, I will go ahead and pin myself. And um, 
I'll tell you a little bit about this song. So this song came about, um, I'm going to dedicate it to my, my dear friend, Alana, my new friend, because uh, we were collaborating this week, and she told me she was doing something about mammoths for the kid hour, or the kid play sta playstation, playtime. And I was like, you know, mammoths was one of those um, topics that I really didn't get a chance to write about when I was doing my residency in 2017 to write the songs that I did write. And so I said, you know what? Why not take this time right now to, to try to make a song about it? So I did my research and I found um, out that our mammoths, uh, we were able to excavate some mammoths from the Black Rock area. But then as I kept doing my research, I found out that there was lots of things that happened during, um, throughout history, throughout time before humans uh, in the Black Rock. And, and it kind of led me to create, instead of a song just about mammoths, a song about the Black Rock timeline. So this song um, has been sung only in the beauty of my own classroom slash guest house, guest room here. Um, but one day I hope to be able to sing it live with you in person. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to rely on the voices inside my head, because they're always singing with me, to sing the parts that I would imagine you singing with me in person. But if you too, too, do truly want to sing along, there are some parts that kind of repeat and uh, feel free, feel free to join in. Oh man, my knees. Okay, so I need this, and I need this, and without further ado, she works it. No, I choose you. All right, so this is the Black Rock Desert Timeline song. Whee! I'll turn it a little bit so that way I don't look so awkward. But there's only so much you can fix. All right. The Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. Vegetation and population all have seen some change. Cover it up with some sedimentary rock, that is. And the layers that show help us know about its history. Let's start our journey back in time to the late Triassic period, when our friend the ichthyosaur ruled the sea. 200 million years ago, the desert that you see was once the bottom of an ocean massive scenery. Within these ancient waters swam a reptile known for size, Shoshonosaurus popularis Nevada State Fossil Pride. Oh, the ichthyosaur is no more. 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 Let's go ahead and move along to the middle of the Mesozoic era to see what was happening then. 100 million years ago, or so we estimate, the ground was shifting, moving, lifting of tectonic plates. Explosions and erosions made volcanic island chains, from which we now have both the Black Rock and the Jackson Range. Shaky plate, shaky plate, mountain ranges do they make? Shaky plate, shaky plate, mountain ranges do they make? Shaky plate, shaky plate, mountain ranges do they make? Shaky plate, shaky plate, mountain ranges do they make? Nevada wasn't always completely covered by water. So let's go ahead and visit the end of the Pleistocene epoch to learn a little bit more about that. 25 to 11,000 years before our time, Nevada's mountain ranges were far slipperier to climb. Covered in thick sheets of ice, the water found its route into the ancient Lake Wahontan, of which we know about. Oh, the Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. The Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. Vegetation, vegetation, and population all have seen some change. Cover it up with some sedimentary. And the layers that show help us know about its history. Mammoths, 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 here comes the mammoths. Mammoths, mammoths, here come about 15,000 years ago before this very day. Some Colombian mammoths were the ones who led the way. With giant tucks, they dug real deep to let the water out until they couldn't find no more, and then they dried it out. Oh, the Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. Vegetation and population all have seen some change. Cover it up with some sedimentary rock, that is. And the layers that show up as know about its history. Did you know that the Black Rock Desert is home to some of the oldest markings left by humans, earliest humans in North America? It's true. 
Around 10,000 years ago, or so the experts say, ancient North Americans were in the vicinity. The petroglyphs they left behind for us to figure out how they lived while they were here and what they were about. Some of the markings that we see are still a mystery. Some of the markings that we see are still a mystery. Some of the markings that we see are still a mystery. Some of the markings that we see are still a mystery. The last few centuries brought an increase of people through the Black Rock Desert for a variety of reasons. Within the past 200 years, a lot has changed indeed. Immigration, transportation, and gold led many to grieve. Some would choose the path they took with hopes of striking it rich, unknowing what which was laid ahead would lead them in a ditch. Oh, the Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. Vegetation and population all have seen some change. Cover it up with some sedimentary. Rock, that is, and the layers of show up as know about its history. Today, the Black Rock region brings in fans from far and wide, looking for a place to explore or temporarily reside. No matter what your reason is for wanting to come enjoy it, show that you care to do your share and teach others not to destroy it. Oh, the Black Rock today hasn't always been the same. Vegetation and population all have seen some change. Cover it up with some sedimentary. Rock that is, and the layers that show up is so about its history. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Uh, the Black Rock Time oh. song with its own variations and changes, with it only being it's sung for the second time in the world. So, um, Yay! It certainly has been fun getting to sing and cook and talk and joke and, and have you here today. Um, with that, we are officially moving into the closing ceremonies. Tell us more about that, Chris. All right, everyone, close your eyes. All right, we're here. We're in the closing ceremonies. We Yay! just traveled millions of miles through time and space. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I think that was such a cool way to end the... Uh, Black Rock Rendezvous is that little song. It's pretty much just the people who organized it and a few uh, strong stalwarts at this point, so. Um, they aren't eating any of our good food then. <laughs> no, I think this is great, this is nice. Gabby, you have a really cute puppy. So cute. Um, I don't know, I think if anyone has anything else to say, now's the time to say it. The virtual Black Rock Rendezvous is about to end it's live portions, but um, it will live on in recorded video format. I just in our hearts. Say, may I say, am I on mute? Can you hear me? I have been so impressed with what everybody has done to make this event such a success. Not only has it been really fun, it has been a lot of work and a, a lot of effort and we've all risen to the occasion and made it something that I think we can all learn from and replicate if knock on wood we never have to do this again and we do it all in person but I think we learned a lot and I'm so grateful for you all bless you thanks Stacy I agree thanks to everyone who tuned in all week um, it was just a really fun way to interact with uh, our volunteers and members and people who we haven't gotten to see in a while. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And um, I also really enjoyed getting to learn some new stuff. Um, I tuned into a lot of the different lessons and there's a lot of really interesting information out there. And I hope that, um, you know, some of these folks will join us at the Black Rock Rendezvous in the future when we're able to have it out on the playa. It's been a little bittersweet to be doing it so remotely, but it's wonderful to see you all. There were some excellent talks and meetings, and I guess if you can't be there actually, then virtually it is. Thank you all very much. Thanks so Good much. To you. Nice to see you, Lightning. Likewise, and congratulations. <laughs> Was here. Oh, yeah. Should we do one last plug for uh, Friends of Nevada Wilderness, Friends of Black Rock High Rock, and Nevada Outdoor School? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. 
I'm not Absolutely. sure we have. I'm not sure we have anyone on who isn't a member of one or all of those. <laughs> that's great. Right. That's there are quite that's a lot of people here. You're still live on Facebook. You're still recording. That's right. If you're watching this at another time, uh, this whole week and all of the events were hosted by Friends of Nevada Wilderness, Friends of Black Rock High Rock, and Nevada Outdoor School. Um, and we would love it if you became a member of um, any or all of our organizations, um, came out to volunteer with us, Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Um, we have a lot of different ways that you can get involved in all of our organizations. And um, we just really appreciate you following along and, and being here and, and hope that we can see you all in the future. Totally. Um, well said, Laura. Thanks. Yeah, well said. The, the photography panel before this was really cool. Um, I wish we had like a few more hours on that. It was super cool hearing everyone's perspective. <laughs> like, That's my margarita maker. <laughs> and it's like so, it's so fun seeing the photographers like with their pictures talking about what their thought process was. Um, yeah, absolutely. I wish we could have had some more time on that one too. I, I think we should now do we that. Next time. We should do that and like just maybe we can put that together in a couple months, like do a rerun, but totally banded because I, I would love to hear more. I'm I'm totally down for that. I'll raise my hand, but you know, talk to talk to the talk to Stacy too. <laughs> but, but, but I'm down. I, I cannot see why there isn't any reason that we can't partner together for panel discussions and film viewings and music and, and other things until things change or you know into the future. Well, and some things actually work better this way, like in the photography panel. When else would you be able to collect photographers that are kind of really spread out across the West? If we had California, Nevada, Utah, and see all their photos and see them talk. Um, it was very special, really fun. Some things like this would be better in person though. Yeah. I thought this was great. This was really fun. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you so much for hosting it. Um, you were just great and it was fun to hear all of your songs as it always is. I really appreciated that. And it was fun to banter with everyone, even if we can't do it in person. Anybody have a good joke they want to end on? How was your summer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> what is fairy shrimp? Good joke. Okay. How did, what did the fairy shrimp say to the other fairy shrimp? How was your summer? <laughs> Pretty dry. <laughs> this is Nora's fairy shrimp. It's her block print. Oh my God. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I put it up in my house. It, it weirds out people who don't know about fairy shrimp. It's great. <laughs> nice. I have one in my hair too. Yeah. It creeps people out. <laughs> Um, well, I don't have anything else to say. Um, yep, I need to go eat some dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Should we all say I, I'm hungry yeah. after watching you all cook. Yeah. Super <laughs> awesome, you guys. Right. Bye. Bye. Everything. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Remember, Bye. Guys, thank you. See you at the next rendezvous. Super inspiring. Thanks. See you next year.